Hello guys, today I have a small game for you. I will say the name of two famous things and you will have to find the similarity between them in 5 seconds. Here you go. The names are Titanic and Goldman Sachs Group. So did you find it? If yes, kudos. If no, this video is for you. Hi guys, my name is Dheeraj Vaidya and welcome to Wall Street Mojo, the home to most authentic information on finance and accounting. Now, coming back to Titanic and Goldman Sachs, these two are the famous names in their respective fields who were believed to be too big to fail. But eventually Titanic sank, but Goldman Sachs was stamped to be too big to fail. So what does too big to fail mean? This too big to fail or TBTF is a term used in banking and finance to describe businesses that have a significant economic impact on the global economy. Now these are the firms whose failure could result in a worldwide financial crisis. In simple terms, these companies help in balancing the financial system. And because of their crucial role in keeping the financial system balanced, the government steps into saving such interconnected institutions in the event of market or sector collapse. Banks are a typical example of too big to fail. However, in some cases, insurance companies and other business firms also fit the norm of too big to fail. Let me explain the concept of too big to fail with a simple example. Let's say that a farmer has a big apple tree in his backyard. He takes good care of the tree which has grown very well. Unfortunately, there was heavy rain and a storm one day and the tree began to shake. Let's assume that it lost some of its branches and most of its fruits. The farmer was concerned, but he didn't do anything. However, at one point, the tree began to shake violently to the extent that it was about to uproot. Immediately, the farmer with the help of his son laid some mud sacks around the base of the tree, tied it with ropes and secured it so that the tree doesn't get uprooted. Eventually, the rain stopped and the tree survived. I purposely took this example to help you understand its analogy or similarity with the concept of too big to fail. So here is how the analogy goes. The tree used in this example corresponds to the global economy. The branches and the leaves are the other small businesses. The roots represent the bigger businesses, financial institutions and significant banks. And finally, the farmer represents the government. So just like a rainstorm, if any issue occurs and the economy starts to shake violently, the government starts focusing on saving the too big to fail companies. As I said before, if such a company fails, the whole economy will be uprooted. So coming to the next important part of our discussion, how does the government actually help these companies? Let's find out. So initially, the government identifies these important institutions like banks and other businesses by analyzing their failure impact on other companies. So if the institution fits the norm of TBTF, the government rescues these companies by providing either the federal loans or bailouts. And why do they do that? Because, you know, taking such measures can help the company stand up and withstand the financial crisis. Having said that, now let's discuss how this too big to fail concept evolved. To get a clear idea, you should know that initially there were very few banks and they were kind of constrained to the state. So as a result, the banks became dependent on the local economy. So in the case of any failure of the local economy, the banks would also suffer. It happened in 1920s and early 1930s when many banks across the US failed. 
To prevent this, the federal government allowed interstate banking. In addition, a Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation or FDIC was also created to monitor the banks and provide insurance to customers deposit. This created competition and improved banking services. US Congressman Stephen McKinney in 1984 popularized the term too big to fail while discussing the intervention of FDIC. Since then, it has been in use. Since the topic is pretty clear now, let's see some real life examples. One of the classic examples of too big to fail is the case of a Detroit based bank of Commonwealth which was on the verge of collapsing in 1972. Seeing the condition of the bank, the FDIC lent $60 million to the bank to stand up again. But unfortunately, the bank could not recover completely and Comerica Bank acquired it in 1983. A more recent example is the case of Lehman Brothers, which happened during this 2007-2008 financial crisis. Lehman Brothers filed for the largest bankruptcy in the U.S. history. It was a manic Monday in the financial markets. The Dow tumbled more than 500 points after two pillars of the street tumbled over the weekend. Lehman Brothers, a 158-year-old firm, filed for bankruptcy. And the FDIC summoned other banks to negotiate the financing, but nothing turned out fruitful. Ultimately, Hank Paulson, the Secretary of the U.S. Treasury, disapproved of the bailout, causing the company to fail. Lehman Brothers' case tells us clearly that sometimes it is not possible to save all the important financial institutions. Now arises the question of how to prevent banks from becoming too big to fail. To avoid TBTF, precautions are taken by both the banks and the government. For instance, you know, government has initiated necessary steps like establishing the Financial Stability Oversight Council. It regulates the banks and prevents them from going bankrupt. Another initiative was to pass the Dodd-Frank Act. The Volcker's Rule is a subordinate of Dodd-Frank Act that prevents the bank from taking massive risks and also defines capital requirements for this consumer lending and proprietary trading. And again, the US government also makes sure that the banks increase their reserve requirements. In addition, banks have also started reforming their ways to avoid getting this name tag of too big to fail. The first step is to ensure that the value of share capital exceeds the international standards, commonly known as the Swiss finish. It aids in the prevention of huge losses. The second step involves using contingent convertible bonds. So basically, banks can convert them into shares in case of emergency. And the third step is to follow the global financial system reforms introduced by the Financial Stability Board. It advises the international banks to consider issuing special debt which they could retain during challenging market conditions. Always remember, prevention is better than cure. And if you find this topic interesting, then you should watch the film Too Big to Fail, which is based on Andrew Ross Sorkin's non-fiction book. It shows, you know, the inside story of how Wall Street and Washington fought to save the financial system and themselves in 2009. Let me know what you think about the concept in the comment section. I hope you found this video to be useful. Please do like and share. And if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future videos, then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section. Also, we come up with interesting videos on finance and accounting topics regularly. So if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button so that you can get the notification as soon as we release the new video. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.